This is from a great film, Killer's Kiss, 1955, Stanley Kubrick. I don't know if you've seen it, but you really should. It's a great on-location New York film, which evoking for me just the cinema and theater as a kind of form of escape from, from within the city, although that's not one of my main themes for, for today. I wanted to talk about escape from congestion in which the themes are uh, planning and the built environment and sort of closeness and, and confinedness in the city. Um, this was meant to, the text with this was meant to be um, escape from responsibility and thinking about the public realm and thinking about citizenship uh, and thinking about our obligations to one another in the city and the ways in which uh, cities are places in which we, we um, both forgive a lot in terms of responsibility. We talk about the diffusion of responsibility in cities. We escape from it. And yet, we're, uh, many of us are also thinking very carefully about how to create communities and communities of shared interests and responsibility in the city. So that's escape from responsibility. And this is escape from routine. Um, or escape from drudgery was sort of how I was thinking about it initially, which is also to do with entertainment and kind of social worlds more broadly. And I'm going to kind of run us through a handful of, uh, of itineraries through some of these escapes, also kind of taking a page from the footprint concept we've talked about. Um, so these are little paths for us to walk on, and I'm just going to go through them very quickly. And a lot of this stuff are things that we're all sort of familiar with as we generate uh, sort of narratives from the history of cities and the history of urban planning that relate very closely to the idea of escape. And escaping from congestion, that was the first thing that popped into my mind when I had the first conversation with, with Sarah Farwell about this. Um, and thinking about the kind of desire in the city to kind of keep finding more space, the whole kind of discourse of housing and tenements and density and congestion and moving us further and further afield. And it happens in lots of small ways. I mean, even tenement house reform, where we begin to get these dumbbell plans allowing these air vents in the buildings is a way to escape from congestion in these ways. Uh, Jacob Reese taking pictures of the cramped spaces of uh, the Lower East Side, for example. Uh, they're actually quite complex and interesting photos because the, the participants are quite forthright, standing there staring at Jacob Reese in the face and really claiming quite a bit of space around their bodies, which maybe is quite natural. People living in a cramped environment but really staking their claim to that space. And then Reese taking these photos uptown and showing, the, uh, and showing them in, in lovely parlors and getting people upset about these kinds of conditions down in the slums. We have to do something about the congestion down there beginning to get these kinds of um, these kinds of interventions and leading and this, this shouldn't be overly teleological it's not exactly a direct path but to finally the kinds of reforms that would lead to um, to housing estates public housing estates in the interwar period and then again with great rapidity in the post-war period all kind of to do with congestion and escaping congestion in, in one form or another it's the same thing with office buildings when equitable put up their, um, their tower, 40-story tower on Wall Street in 1915, uh, people started saying, we have problems here because uh, the self-interest of the single corporation is now coming at the expense of the rest of us. It's hogging all the light, hogging all the air. We need to figure out a way to uh, escape from this kind of congestion. And it's one of the factors that hastens the 1916 Comprehensive Zoning Law, in which we say you have to step back from the street. You have to allow light and air to come through here. Mm -hmm. And then the New Yorker Hotel, I just love this Christmas card, a little angel straddling, uh, baby New Year, whatever it is, straddling, uh, straddling those lovely Art Deco wedding cake towers, which is exactly the result of this escape from congestion through public policy. Um, traffic congestion, as you know, I mean, you can't talk about cities um, without thinking about escape from traffic congestion. They would show pictures like this not to show how busy, how active, how vital the city is. Look at all the action. I mean, we want that. Traffic is good, traffic is business. But to say, we are in trouble. Everyone's working on the same ground plane. We've got to split up the ground planes. All you've got to do is have some designated right of ways. The modern um, <laughs> traffic uh, tower battle here. And who's going to save the day? The planners. These are the planners with the city parkways laying out. And, and they're going to, they're going to, the parkways are going to get rid of crime, tax delinquency. Um, and, and also fix the exodus of citizens, too. So they're actually going to p help treat the kind of escape from the city at all by, by producing these. And we know about Futurama, the General Motors exhibit from the 1939, beginning to create the desire for these kinds of highways in the first place. And we begin to see them. 
first in Detroit or amongst, not first in Detroit, they, 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 we call this the first, I guess, depressed highway within the city. Actually, the great piece of urban design here, and I wonder if Brent agrees with this, I, mean, I find this to be one of the most lovely pieces of American urban design, period, built over what was um, railroad areas. I mean, it's implicated now in the post-war story of urban highways, but for the time, it is this kind of escape from congestion in the city. I mean, what a lovely, kind of amazing project, the West Side Highway. Of course, in the post-war period, the scale would get ramped up, this kind of escape from congestion. We run into trouble in some cities, like um, my native uh, New Haven here, where to build the Oak Street connector was a dream come true. Um, to be able to clear the slum area that was there before, what was called and labeled the slum, and to turn into this highway network, to link in, to plug in to the network. Um, and it's meant to help fight against the escape from the city of all of these shoppers. This is a lovely, strange propaganda image from the New Haven Redevelopment Agency. These are all white suburban lady shoppers. Um, that are want to be drawn into the center city to do to do shopping, and this was like, this went along with an advertisement for for some of the beautiful, incredible garages that we have in New Haven, capital of post-war garage structures. You've got to come to New Haven to take to take our tour. But all of this to do with escape from congestion, and this gets very complicated, doesn't it? Because they're trying to draw people into the city, but in fact, it pushes people out just as much. And why come to downtown New Haven to shop at a suburban shopping center? I mean, it just didn't make any sense. Um, and, and we're kind of familiar with some of those narratives of, of escape. Um, this is escape from responsibility. Okay, just remind me. Of this um, and it's partly to do, I mean, there's a lot to do with this kind of image. I mean, these are all little small escapes of the domestic sphere. And there have been progressive planners that would say, take all this crap out, let's make one nice, lovely space for everyone to kind of enjoy as a community. But people don't want that. Even in New York, everyone wants to mow their own little lawn right there behind their, behind their row houses. And this, to me, is a contrast with some of the recent investments that I hope we can talk about, too, in terms of small parks and small little pieces of the public realm as escapes, um, small moments of escape within the city, even escaping from traffic and from the role of the street at that time. But escape from responsibility raises something else really, really interesting for me, which is just how we treat our citizens, our fellow citizens, how we make decisions. I love this cover. Here he is. He's like, he's like an underemployed graphic designer, right? I mean, <laughs> so he's not really in a rush. I mean, he could help her. He's not rushing to get to work. He's like, what do, what do I do? What are my responsibilities to my fellow citizens here? I mean, I can escape. I can escape from dealing with this potentially awkward situation of helping the lady carry, carry the baby up the stairs, or I can intervene. Um, and you know, we're always reading Metropolitan Diary as well to get some of these stories of how we escape from responsibility in one form or another. I won't read this to you, but um, A.R. Hannon talks about how a very obnoxious person uh, was talking on the cell phone on the phone. She finds out, or he finds out that they're going to the Met, and refuses to tell them that the Mets actually closed that day. <laughs> sort of like snickering behind their back, uh, 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 we didn't tell them, because they had transgressed social norms by speaking so loudly on the phone, and say, Let's, you're, you're, you're on your own. But it's an escape from responsibility, and I couldn't help but bring Georg Zimmel, partly because he looks just like this guy, from the Mets Pauline Diaries, I don't know, but there's Georg Zimmel, maybe that's what they were trying to do. Georg Zimmel at the, at the parking meter, but he's one of these, um, thinkers writing um, in Berlin at the turn of the last century who talked about how we need to escape from congestion and intensity of, of the city in some sense, and we build these carapaces around us. We evolve to be able to escape internally um, from just the stimuli of the city. And I hope we can speculate, as I think we will too, about devices and all the rest of it. Are we losing our ability to adapt to stimuli because of the crutch? I mean, that's a real problem. Zimmel's talking about a real psychophysiobiological evolution that urban dwellers go through. We may be stripping ourselves of that if, if we become too reliant on all, on all the rest of it. Anyway, escape from that, that kind of um, responsibility. Um, and these pictures, too. This is Dennis Hopper's great photographer, 1961, and actor and director, as you know, too, called Double Standard. And this is uh, Dennis Hernandez's uh, photograph of, of Wilshire Boulevard in Los Angeles from 1979. So what am I going here with this? I mean, part of it is our responsibility to think about urban issues. I mean, the double standard here is interesting. He's in his car. He can escape. 
he's partly commenting on the absurdity of the two, the signage and the station, but, and, and the sort of degradation of the landscape, you might say, this is one interpretation, there might be many, I mean, one of the great things about this photo called Double Standard is it's totally deadpan. There it is, Double Standard. It's just telling you exactly what it is. But the Double Standard is he can get away even as he critiques what's there. Um, and this image also I find quite compelling in that respect. Uh, there's a lot to read into this, but waiting for the bus in general in many cities is a kind of um, form of, of, of marginalization in different forms, although we don't think it should be that way. In fact, we have to work to make buses even hipper and, and, and smarter ways of getting around. Oh, but yeah, but this is my last slides are right now. So, so anyway, responsibility to, to each other. And then finally, last, last slides here, um, escape from routine, escape from drudgery. The White City is a whole other conversation, but of course within it was the Midway Plaisance. You almost have to escape from the formality of the City Beautiful into this world of entertainment and exoticism and all the rest of here, these Victorian ladies chortling to see these guys from, from Tahiti or wherever exactly they, are, they were brought in from. And the last slide is the real great escape artists of the 20th century too, or amongst them, are the situationists who are partly trying to escape from ritual, routine, from the dominance of, of mapping and planning techniques, and um, creating this form of escape as they would rewrite the sort of social fabric fabric of the city. So those are some of my initial reactions and thoughts about, about escape uh, with respect to congestion, um, responsibility, and routine. So thanks.